Welcome to the art of feeding, one of the most challenging and exciting parts of the game. There are seven keys to feeding. One, scan the field before you catch the ball so that you can know what you're going to do with it before you get it. Know the spots on the field that you have to get to to maximize your ability to feed effectively. Rather than focusing on your man who's on you, learn to see through your man so that you can see sliders and see outlets and see defenders. Shorter feeds are better feeds. You need to learn how to get your hands free to feed. You need to be able to feed around your man and around his stick. And lastly, and maybe most importantly, you need to learn how to use deception. You need to learn how to buy time for the receiver. Let's go back to the beginning. You need to forget how they taught you how to feed. The way they taught you to throw is the exact opposite of the way you want to feed. You want to be deceptive. You don't want to point your butt end to your target and step to your target and look at your target and follow through to your target. You want to be deceptive. And here are all the different feeding terminologies we're going to go over. The lever pass, the behind the back pass, your backhand pass, your one hand pass, twister feeds, look away feeds, lob, spot feeds, brick feeds, and your fake jump shot feeds. Let's get into the video and check it out. Let's start off talking about feeding spots. The first thing we want to talk about is where on the field we need to get to to feed. These red shaded areas give you an idea of where you want to be. And here's why. From these, from these angles, you can feed all over the field. You have an angle to feed anybody you want, backside and ball side. Whereas when you're behind the net, you can really only feed to the wings because the goalie could knock down your ball to the middle. Therefore, the biggest key is to get into those areas, into those dangerous feeding spots where you can make plays like this. One of the keys to being a great feeder is being able to dodge to feed. Let's take a look at how these dodgers are getting their hands free. Split, hesitation move, question mark to get the hands free. Seven yard feed, body bounce to get the hands free, six yard feed, physical dodge, pin hands to get the hands free, six yard feed, physical dodge, feed over the top of the man, seeing through him, eight yard feed, two man game, create separation, five yard feed, physical dodge, lob over the top from inside the hashes. One of the things great feeders always do is they see the game one play ahead. How do you do this? You simply need to look up before you get the ball. You need to know what you're going to do with the ball before you get it. If you want to be able to make a one-time pass, you need to know where your one more is. You need to be able to one more it and quick stick it through on a skip pass, on a wall pass. You can see here this shooter had a one more and didn't see it. If he dumps it down, it's a certain goal. So even sometimes the best in the world don't see it. You have to see it before it happens. Seeing the one more before you catch it is one of the biggest keys to being a great feeder. Look at this situation here on the little fake flip and watch 57 look right now. See how he turned his head after, after he flips the ball, before he receives it, he takes a look to the middle so that he can make a quick decision and make the right decision. One of the keys to being great feeders is always see the backside of the field. Even at the pro level, they have to take away the ball side and oftentimes it leaves the backside open. You need to see the whole field, but make sure you see the backside. It is impossible for a defense to cover backside and ball side. Learning how to use hangups to create feeding opportunities is a high level skill. High level feeders use hangups to create opportunities for better feeding angles. When you think of hangups, you think of a situation like this where the defender is simply stuck in front of the net. And we already talked about this. Being straight behind the goal isn't necessarily the greatest 
angle to feed. Although it's a close feed, but you can't feed the middle as easily as you can feed the wings. Obviously, there's little plays you can run to try to open things up. But what I'm trying to teach you with regard to hang-ups is how to put yourself in position where you can create a great feeding angle and a bad approach. So watch this attackman at X hanging on the backside and hanging his man up on the backside. As the ball begins to move this way, the feeder moves into position and is able to feed from a great feeding angle close to the net and able to feed the ball side and the back side. Let's watch here. There's a left-handed alley dodge. Look at the man at X, hanging his man up on the backside pipe, waiting for the moment to show. And now his hands are free and able to feed the one more from very tight. His man is also approaching him from one side of the cage. One of the keys to your hang-up game is that you can make the defender approach you at an awkward angle. In order to hang your man up, you have to watch your man and see the ball. In this case, the X-man's defender is second sliding to the backside of the crease, and the feeder knows it. And he positions himself open and in a position where he can feed the cutter. Sometimes when they take a bad approach to you, you can come right around and dunk it. Great players are using their hang-ups to set up their feeds and dodges at all times. The lever pass is an incredibly important technique, and we're going to go over all of its applications. First, it allows you to feed when people are all over your hands. By holding your hands away and feeding with no follow through, you can get into your man and have your hands free to feed. This is a beautiful example of a lever feed to the crease. Rob Pinnell uses his lever feed as much as anybody in the game. Watch him stick his body into his man, pivot for his strong hand, hold his stick away and his hands away, right into his man, and throw a perfect feed. Here's another beautiful example of Rob Pinnell using his lever feed while a man is tight to him. John Grant Jr., same thing. Another advantage of the lever feed is it allows you to draw and dump more effectively. Because there's no follow through, you can feed the ball at the last minute and a check to your hands will not alter the path of the ball. Another example, watch Sean Evans draw his man and execute a lever feed to suck his man into his hands. Same thing right here. Draw the man into your hands and deliver a pass at the last possible moment. It allows you to more effectively draw a defender. In this case, this dodger is doing both. He's protecting his hands and drawing and able to throw a perfect pass that ends up an assist because of a lever pass technique. A lever pass is also a very disguised pass. People can't see it coming because there's no follow through, because you're not looking at your target necessarily, because you're not stepping to your target and you're just popping the ball out of your stick. Nobody sees it coming and it buys time for a receiver. It's a very deceptive pass. Mark Matthews uses the lever pass all the time. Here's Miles Jones feeding the crease and buying more time for his receiver because of his lever pass. In two-man games, lever passes are used for the same thing, to buy time for the receiver. When you don't square up and follow through to your target, nobody sees it coming. Here, Miles Jones feeds it pretty much right out of his cradle, buying time for the receiver. It's the name of the game. Behind the back passes, are exactly like lever passes, but they're behind your back. There's no follow through. Your hands are always free. Let's go over the various applications. This is what always happens on behind the back feeds. The ball's in the back of the net before anybody realizes it. 
Your hands are always free when you feed behind the back. You can get right up into your man and execute a perfect pass. It's almost impossible to guard your hands. It buys time for the receiver on the crease. You can draw so effectively in behind the backs. Look at how much time Sean Evans is buying for the receiver on this. In man up situations. It allows you to buy time for the receiver and it's so deceptive nobody sees it coming. New angles, nobody sees it coming. You can look like you're dodging. You can feed right out of your double threat position. Nobody sees it coming. You can roll back and stick your body in and feed the ball, and the defense doesn't see it coming. When they slide to you, you can have people all over your hands. It buys time for the receiver. In your two-man game, just like in the lever pass, it buys time for the receiver. Always buys time. It's one of the best techniques. Your backhand pass is another incredibly deceptive pass. People just don't see it coming. Usually when you're feeding in your backhand, it looks like you're dodging. The defense begins to collapse on you, and yet you have opportunities to feed beautifully. Whether it's off of a face dodge or a rollback, it sells dodge and it allows you to kick passes out. Watch this, face dodge, kick out. He bought a lot of time for Jeremy Noble. See Sean Evans face dodge, fake his backhand, and then pass his backhand. The fake even buys his receiver more time. You can throw back like on a pull pass with your backhand. Many times your backhand ends up being not only more deceptive, but just an easier pass to make than to make the pass with your weak hand. One hand passes are another example of creative passing. A lot of times it happens off a rollback with a slide coming and your one hand allows you to throw the ball around your man and around the defender to the open man. Here John Grant Jr. swims to his weak hand and uses his one hand pass. Here, Randy Stats spins underneath, sees a slide coming, and delivers a crafty and deceptive one-hand pass. A lot of box players use their one-hand pass on their pick and roll, drawing double, draw, 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 and dump. It can be used similar to a backhand pass in this situation. You could always do a double toe drag to get through the traffic. Watch Randy Stats here deliver a one hand behind the back. This is just gross. Almost as gross as this one from John Grant Jr., who delivers a fake before his one hand behind the back. The ability to use fakes and no looks are incredibly important because, again, they buy time for your receiver. Whether it's a twister pass to create some misdirection, or a look away to throw us through the defense. A look away to find the midfielder cutting. A double threat posture so your defender doesn't get on your hands. Deception matters. When slides are coming, fake away from where you want to throw the ball. Fake away subtly to open up the looks that you want. This redirect fake right here, executed by Ned Crotty. Watch how he subtly pumps to the other man out top before he kicks it inside to Jordan Wolf. Here's another example right here. The subtle pump to find the skip. It's a redirection of the stick into the feed. Just like when we talked about our triple threat where you can feed out of your windup, you can also feed out of your jump shot technique. When, when you look like you're going to be shooting, people start watching you and you can feed. I hope you enjoyed this presentation on the art of feeding. Feeding is such an important and exciting part of the game. 
please reference these micro trainings because they will help you with all of the dodging that goes along with the passing techniques to make you a great feeder.